Boom shaka laka laka boom shaka laka laka boom shaka laka laka boom shaka laka laka hey boys and girls ladies and gentlemen woo Faros reborn look at that look at that uh, don't you feel reborn just looking at it mm hmm oh yeah that's a big old flamey chest right there. My mum says it looks like, uh, like my my like I don't know, like my chest has been opened and it's kind of scary. Well, there it is. That is what it look, that's what it looks like inside my chest. The power of the flame. Yeah. So, hi. Um, the minuscule flame is gone, and now the the giant chesty flame is here. So let's carry <laughs> carry on with Fyros' story time. Oh. <laughs> the only thing about these t-shirts, there's many things that are wrong with these t-shirts actually. This particular one, I mean. Um, this exact specific item of clothing that I am wearing now. This one is wrong because the quality is bad. And this is the second company I got it from. The first company, quality was awesome, but I hadn't changed the logo to be the, of the correct size. Um, and that meant that it wasn't saleable. This one is not saleable because just I'm not going to let other people wear this. I don't want to run a fucking wear the... Um, the quality shit, man. It's shit. It feels like I'm wearing lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, <laughs> it just doesn't feel right. Uh, it might improve after the first wash, um, but at the moment it just doesn't feel right. It's it's not itchy, but it feels slightly abrasive. Uh, I don't know what the fucking what is the. I don't know what the material is. I guess it's some kind of weird, poly type of thing beginning with poly. Poly. There's no further joke to that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now I'm going to say something. Let's play with the shiny thing for a bit. Hello, shiny thing. Oh, no, he's got a hurty bit. Oh, shut up. Good. Um, oh, dear. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to stop these videos at some point. I'm going to have to actually stop doing them because I cannot go on doing this forever. Um, YouTube is not working for me. It has never worked for me. Right. So what I'm what I guess I'm thinking that this is going to be eventually is just a kind of little record of a little period in my life um, on the Internet as videos. Um, yeah, because I suppose that some of these videos are pretty much like, they're not timeless in that they're uh, this amazing thing, but they're timeless in the sense that I can look back at them because the facts of the situations are, are unlikely to change in terms of these story times videos. You know, it's like, I'm just telling my past history so they can stay as fact. Yeah. Um... So I can have them as like a reference. And on my other channels as well, I feel as though the quality on them is high enough um, that I would want to keep most of them there as just a kind of reference, like um, a little product rather than... The whole thing with YouTube is like, it's all about series, isn't it? It's all about kind of continuation, 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 continuation. So every YouTuber is constantly outputting content. So PewDiePie is making video after video, day after day after day. And it's just that job type of mentality. And there has to be an end point. Like, you know, I'm getting to the point where I've done this since 2012, I suppose, truly. So it's nearly six years. I don't can't remember exactly when I started, but 2012, I remember I was uploading a couple of videos onto an old channel. Um, and in fact, my first channel that I had was when YouTube was first around, which was like, what, 2008? Not exactly sure. 
but um, that didn't go very far either. Um, yeah, and just something about it for me is like this has never worked financially for me. It's never done anything for me really, other than been a personal, you know, it's only been a personal journey with YouTube. Where I've had little fans here and there. People have come and gone. People have gone wow. People have said amazing. People have commented. And then I've dissolved that channel and changed the channel to a different one. Um, so it's just been a whole personal journey, basically. Uh, I've been through a whole roller coaster of stuff. I went through a period. Uh, my most famous period in my own memory is when I did the, um, I mean, famous to me, like most memorable, most memorable period to me was when I did this, um, what was it? Five, five minutes of fire Ross challenge day challenge 80 day challenge or something or like video a day one video a day challenge and it was five minutes pure me just sat there in front of the camera for five minutes where whatever feeling i was in unedited no editing you know i don't do editing on my channel i actually believe it or not started off doing edited videos um little joke videos with editing um uh, not with scripts but like i knew what the joke was little songs and stuff with an not animations but pictures and things yeah, but this is far too much, like far too time consuming and too much energy. It takes too much energy to edit edit videos in. I was just like, oh, bollocks to it. Yeah. Um, but so I did this like, I swear it was 80 days. I did it for 80 days. Fucking hell, that's loads. 80 days of five minutes a day, which sounds like nothing, right? But on the other hand, it was <laughs> fucking relentless just to sit in front of the camera. I didn't want to do it. I sat in front of the camera when I was depressed. When I was sad, when I was angry, when I was mopey, when I was happy, when I was excited, when I was philosophical, when I was like, had nothing to say, when I was just sat there in silence for a few of them, when I was just eating my dinner and a few other ones. And so that was like, I think probably in my whole YouTube journey, that's been the most, I grew more during those 80 days with the five minutes of fire Ross challenge than I did like in probably the rest of the time <laughs> because something about doing that just put me right here i couldn't hide anymore like part of what i do is a bit of an act you know i mess around i play with silly voices and i get i have fun which is that that's one part of me that's the fun playful aspect of me that i bring out for the videos but then you know like playing around with things but then ah, oh, come on then no, 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 <laughs> oh, It needs more than the other one. Come on now. Oh. oh, that's quite good, actually. Oh, yeah, it's changing the throat chakra there. Let's keep that on for a while. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so, oh, no. Oh, dear, I've lost the point now, haven't I? Come on. Oh. So yeah, but that five minutes of fire rush daily challenge. Okay, I need to put that off because it's distracting. It really helped me grow. Fuck's sake, fine. It helped me grow a lot because I couldn't hide anymore. And so I had to go to a deeper place and I had to kind of just be more vulnerable and stop playing an act. And now... I don't think there's anything wrong with playing an act, okay? I don't think there's anything wrong with the ego, the social self, you know, the, the false self that we project to other people, the, the happy self or even the victimized self, whatever. There's nothing wrong with it in in itself because it's actually quite a, a rich place of creativity. You know, the ego is this amazing thing that you gain all sorts of different um, inspiration from the ego. You know, your self-image, your image of yourself you can play around with that once you know that you have an image of yourself as well as a deeper self that you can play around with like how you present through your ego self like your outer shell you can change all that stuff around like that's the personalization of your life isn't it like changing the way your phone looks your uh all the personalization is just the image of who you are projected to other people and to yourself so you can just mess around with that. And it's great because there's a hell of a lot of richness to be um, getting on with in that, isn't there? You know, like, for example, I've got seven YouTube channels, all of which represent a slightly different aspect of my personality. And therefore, you could say have like 
a separate false self associated with them to some degree. As in like, it's not my deepest, most truest, most honest, deepest self, but there's a very important part of me that's being expressed through each of the channels. And my deeper self gets to animate those different parts of me um, on each of the different channels. So it's like, if you just completely deny the existence of your ego and the, the, the existence of the little thoughts in your head <laughs> and you try to go into full silent pure consciousness mode, which we are advised to do by spiritual teachings, you miss out on all the fun and joy of the creative aspects of life. You know, where do, where do you silly ideas come from? They come from when your ego says something stupid about someone else or about yourself. You know, the, the ego, the little voice in the head is generated by the, the interplay of your deeper self and the outside world and other people. And it's like all meshed and moshed and mished and smashed. Yeah. So it's cool. I like it. And that's what that's what acting is about, isn't it, as well? Like taking on a different character, taking on a new self, a pretend self that you mess around with and you act it out and you have fun in that, enjoy the process of being or presenting as someone else. Yeah. So where did that one come from? I know where it came from because I need to finish this uh, overall. The whole of the YouTube thing. It needs to finish or at the very least it needs to stop for a good two years probably. And I've never been able to stop YouTubing. Yeah, it's an addiction. It actually is. And it's a weird one because um, I don't get the positive feedback from my channel that you would think I would need for uh, for an addiction. There's no positive reward. <laughs> so I don't know what this is, if this is like some kind of negative addiction where I thrive off the feeling of being unrecognised. I thrive on the feeling of no one knows who I am. I thrive on the feeling of anonymity. I thrive on the unsuccessfulness, the, the fact that I can kind of hide in a little room and just say whatever's in my head. But this has to stop because at some point, hopefully very soon, I just am going to take everything that I've learned from YouTube and have absorbed into my being that what I have become and take it out into real people interactions, groups of people. Um, stand-up comedy or presentations or you know just one-on-ones or group meditation sessions um, because I can't just sit behind a camera forever it's it doesn't do anything for me I think if this had done something for me financially then I might have wanted to carry on but it never has I don't think it ever will either that's the thing like I can't see myself wanting to do the things that I would need to do to make myself successful with YouTube uh, I, th I feel like also the format is gonna die I still feel that way I don't know why it's very strange that I should feel that way because it seems to be quite booming at the moment and I'm loving all the stuff I'm watching on YouTube I've just found a rich new vein of <laughs> videos about kids reacting to old retro technology and there's a whole channel about like um, kids, teens, adults, all reacting to lots of different things, like mainly retro technology and games. Um, yeah, and that's great. And so I like what it has to offer me as a consumer, but what it can offer me as a creator is balls. <laughs> it's really balls. And if you watch, like I've watched a few other people's videos about how much money they earn from YouTube, it's just ridiculous. Like some of them earn have earned loads and loads and loads. And then you've got your regular like work a day YouTubers who are just barely scraping by. And it's like, what the fuck is the point of this? You know, what is the point of this as a job? Bollocks to it. It's pitiful. Um, some guys like 
17 million views overall on his channel, I think. Oh, was it that? Oh, it would be good if I had the fucking numbers. 17 million views overall on his channel. And he'd earned like 16 grand or something, or 14 grand in dollars in the total time of his channel. You're like, that's less than a job. That's less than a like minimum wage job probably, or like just above minimum wage job for a year. So you're like, what is the point of this? What's the point of this? You know, what's the point of this? So what is the point of this for me is just a personal thing, and I need to stop it. I need to stop it. Like at the end of these videos, this video series, um, I don't know what else to do. I mean, I've got, I've got my Budos channel, Budos Budos. My Earthos channel, that's that looks pretty nice. Uh Sierros doing predictions every now and again. I might carry that one on for a bit. Fireos, this is probably the end of the Fireos channel. I mean I've recently kind of like um I recently renewed the channel um this year. But man, I don't know why I'm doing it. I really don't know why I'm doing this. Um I can only think at this moment in time, that the reason I'm doing it is for, for me to look back on as a set of creations that I made, that these videos at the moment represent the peak of me um, in a certain phase of my life. You know, like in the, all the different areas that I've got channels in, these most recent videos, I feel like they are very symbolic or representative, they're very representative of a high quality of... Um, my creative self you know I've, I've reached a certain point in how i present and who i am um that there's no difference between who i am and how i present basically um yeah and so it's like this format doesn't really have anywhere else for me to go with it um the next place to go is to go into the real world and start delivering whatever messages it is that I have, whatever messages I have to people in the real world, like who I can see them and talk to them and hold out my hand and say, come ye, come here to the flame of fire or some burn in the hell. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's got to be more like that because this is just as, I don't even, you know what, even if I suddenly got a hell of a load of fucking subscribers overnight, Bing like that, which is not going to happen. But if it did happen, let's say, I'd feel like it's too little, too late. And also, um, like loads of subscribers really doesn't actually f turn into much in terms of finances. Like, so what is the point of this? Actually, what is the point of this? Um, I was doing this for ages and ages as a personal feeling. I wanted to do it. Uh, and now my feeling is more like I want to stop. I want to end this. I, I'm actually trying frantically to pull myself to a point where I feel like I can end this and stop doing this because I've been doing it for so long. And every time I try and stop it, I go, oh, I just want to just want to do a little bit more. <laughs> I just want to do another video about this or about something else. <laughs> and I need to kind of just like say, man, you know, you've got to stop doing this. This is not helping you. This is a waste of time. It's a waste of time. I mean, I could just go out, sit in a field and talk to myself. Why does the camera have to be on? <laughs> we'll just not, not have the camera on instead. <sighs> yeah, so I really am. I want to stop and it's it feels difficult it feels like uh such a habit i'm in such a junkie youtube junkie yeah um and i just need to stop i just need to like stop doing this now so i'm telling you now i've said this before in other videos in the past that i've like on my previous channel that i what i'm trying to stop myself i'm trying to slow this down and stop it and uh, and take a break, a long break, a really long break, where I don't do any videos, and I do something else instead. And maybe it's just because 
I don't feel like there's anything else I can do straight up, straightforwardly, like straight away, that would take eff- like eff- yeah, effort, basically, to go out and start talking to people in real life. Start making groups and meditation things and workshops and seminars and comedy gigs, whatever. Um, but I need to do it, really. And I, More important than that, I need to stop this because this is just a waste of time. And it also wastes my mental energy wondering whether people are going to watch or not and what I'm checking the views to see who's viewed it, you know, and having all this, like, potential for the channel and it going nowhere is incredibly frustrating. So like looking at the videos and thinking, ah, oh, this is really good. If only people knew what it was. And then I think, well, I don't really want to do the things that I have to do to get people to watch it. So if that's the case, then I'm just going to have to abandon it and just stop. So with that said, just say it one more time, mainly for my own benefit. I am going to be trying to willfully force myself into stopping these videos. Overall, I mean like across all of my channels, I am going to be trying to force an ending so that I can rest from these because I'm not, and I mean, the other day I was thinking, oh, I've got that Power of Now project and maybe I should do the a New Earth project and put them on there. But that, in a way, I need to just, this is the action that, that says stop. Just, just need to stop now. So I'll finish this video. And then there may be one or two more on the same sort of thing, because I wanted to finish this period in my life that I've been speaking about. Um... But yeah, I think I'm just going to have to stop um, after this. So, let's carry on then. Stop, let's carry on, stop, let's carry on. All right, well, where did we get to? Okay, I'll tell you what we haven't spoken much about. We haven't spoken much about America. We spoke a bit about jazz, jazz hostels. I found some pictures of them online. You can still find them. Jazz on Lennox, jazz on the park, jazz on the city, if you really want to find them. Uh, some of the hostels have closed down. Jazz on Lennox has closed down, unfortunately. But there are still some good pictures of it online if you wanted to just have a look at that. You know, if it, if it interests you, Jazz on Linux, L E N O X, Jazz J A double Z on O N, Linux, L E N O X, Jazz on Linux. It's the street, Linux Street, I think it is. I'm not going to type it in. Some good pictures on there um, of what I was describing yesterday with the desk and then the computer bit and then the TV and then the kitchen and the luggage room and stuff. Yeah. So there was that there was that girl Nat, who I haven't mentioned her before, but she used to chew her food thirty two times <laughs> every time she took a bite. She had to chew her food. It was some kind of thing that she had to do. She I think she was a vegan. She was a vegan. She practiced Oh God, not Qi Gong, the other one. Falun Gong. Falun Gong, this was weird Chinese um, spiritual meditation, martial arts, energy work practice thing with all these movements. But this, it's a weird one. It's like a cultish one where there's this one particular master leader who's got all the information and you have to bow to him and like everything comes from him and he's the only one who knows anything in the world. So that's weird. And just as, as an aside, the guy who used to run the corner shop down the road from here um, suddenly turned into a Falun Gong practitioner at one point. He used to have this twitch in his eye, in his face, like, like that. He used to have this little twitch. He did the Falun Gong practice. Um, and I went in there one day and I was like, what, you haven't, your face looks different. You look healthier. Well, where's your twitch and stuff? And he said, oh, yeah, no, I've been doing this Falun Gong thing. You know, it's from the Chinese... Um, a thing called um, Master whatever it is and I was like okay yeah because you do these practices and these movements and it burns up your karma from the inside and I was like ah, okay uh -huh. fair enough I did actually try some of it it's just basically like Tai Chi but there's some cultish element to it and more recently he has blamed 
the Chinese government for why he can't get a job and for why his marriage failed and for why they took all his money because his marriage failed. Chinese government did that, apparently. So there's something weird about it. And this this uh, lady, Nat, um, in the hostel, she was working there. Um, when I first arrived, she, no, when she first arrived, she was just, just like staying there. And then she got a job there as a cleaner. And um, she used to chew her food 32 times. <laughs> Every fucking time. Like that, she wasn't even eating anything particularly chewable. She was a vegan. She was eating sauerkraut soup most of the time. It's just doesn't need chewing that much. Chew it once or twice and just swallow it. And she's like, because she obviously read somewhere that you need to chew things thirty-two times in order to aid digestion or something, or it's correct spiritual practice to do it. Oh man, this person was a nutter. You think I was a nutter in those days? She was a nutter. Um, and then she came in one day, like, shouting at someone because they were going to go to the Body Worlds exhibition. I don't know if you've heard of the Body Worlds ex exhibition. Um, it's this kind of weird, really weird Body Works, sorry, not Body Works exhibition. Ooh, what is it? Body Worlds? Body Worlds exhibition, yeah. Which is these, like, plastinated corpses basically dissected human bodies animals and other anatomical structures of the body that have been preserved through the process of plastination it's disgusting type it in <laughs> body worlds exhibition oh it's just grim like everyone you just see all their internal muscles and all the different parts of the body and supposedly it's fascinating but i just find it absolutely disgusting like why would you want to do that like why would you want to create these things it's just ridiculously gross like why would you want to do this how is this good <laughs> what person thought right i haven't done anything for a while <laughs> what was i gonna do it let's get a load of corpses right Hold on, wait for it, it's going to be good. It is going to be good. I'm going to get a load of corpses, dip them in plastic sort of formalde, formaldehyde sort of thing, whatever it is, plastic thing, plastic stuff, right? So it coats them like and, and preserves them perfectly. Wait, it's going to be good, right? I'm going to put them in different positions. I'm going to take different organs out, leave some of the organs in, yeah? I'm going to put them in different positions and like have all these sort of dead people with the skin all off, by the way. Did I tell you the skin was going to be off? Yeah, all the skin's going to be off. It is going to be good, don't worry. It's going to be really, really good. And and so basically you just have like all these sort of dead bodies with their eyes bulging out, no skin on them, and they're like playing cards and that. What do you reckon? <laughs> no! <laughs> no! What? 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 No! What? Huh? What? No! No! Where did you come from? Well, I was just, I, you know, I like uh, dead, dead people. What, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Why have you done that? What? Who said that was a good idea? Why have you done this? You <laughs> put all these bodies around, naked. One of them's playing uh, saxophone. Why have you done that? Well, it sounded like a good idea, didn't it? I thought we'd laugh. I thought we'd laugh. A bit. <laughs> yeah, but they're all dead. They're all fucking dead. They're dead, and you've t you've you've just you put them in plastic, and their skin's off, and you can see all inside them. What's wrong with you? Why did you want to do that? Like, what part of your brain thought, yeah, this would be a good idea? You know, did you kill them first? Have you did you eat the bits that you didn't that aren't on there? What? Why have you done this? Why have you done this? What? Why have you done this? <laughs> oh, it's just I don't understand it. Like, what is the purpose of it? Oh, so you can see the insides of. I don't need to see the insides of. The, I don't want to see the insides of the body. It's it's gross. 
Why is it this way? Sorry, I'm just looking at them. Ugh. This is disgusting. When you think of what they, you know, you look at them, these body world things, and you think, oh, yeah, it's just a model. Yeah, it is a model of an actual person who is actually dead, who used to be alive. It's not, they haven't just, like, created it out of plastic. It's an actual person who was actually alive, who has, who's had their body plastinated. And turned into plastic. It's not. It's not a fucking clay model. It's a. Re it's an actual person. It's like as if I was dead, standing there. You've stripped my skin off, and you can see my knob in in its plastinated form, and and like all my lungs and shit, and all my guts and that hanging out, and my lungs, you know, and my just one bit of my nose covered in skin. Like, <sighs> why, why, why? Why, ladies and gentlemen, why? And how? How is that even legal? I don't understand. Like, what? Oh, yeah, donate. You put that down in your donation box. Like, do you want to donate your kidneys? Yeah, fine. What about, uh, can you get a liver transplant? I don't know, actually. Kidneys? What can you transplant? Let's just say kidneys. <laughs> do you want to donate your skin? Uh, ooh. No. <laughs> do you want to donate your penis? What for? What do you mean? Well, in case anyone needs a penis transplant. No, I, no, I'll keep that. Thanks. Um, <laughs> heart? Can we have your heart when you're dead? Yeah, go on then. That might be helpful for people. All right, yeah, you can have my heart. All right. What about uh, lungs? Yes, I'd like to keep my lungs, actually. I don't know why. I just like, I want them in the afterlife. Thank you very much. All right, so can can we put you in the body worlds? Like strip off your skin? You don't want your skin anyway. Strip off your skin, put you in the just put you in plastic. <laughs> uh no. Um what <laughs> when has that been an option <laughs> on the fucking form, you know? On the form of, of body uh, donation part, what, would you want to be mate, put in plastic? No, I don't want to be put in plastic at the end of my life. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we've got NHS Body World Plastination card. There you go. I'm going to donate my uh, body to the Body World. Oh, God. Uh, and yeah, the other thing about these T-shirts is they're fucking sleeves are too tight. How could... I've never had sleeves that are too tight to roll up. Look at that, my arm's bulging out of it. They're just, they're perfect, it's a perfect fit there, but you can't roll them up. <laughs> what the fuck? Come on, I feel like they're, I feel like Popeye when he's like, had too much spinach. Come on, you. Ah, oh, what is my life? I'm going to be donated to the body worlds. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Oh Lord! Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's just gonna. I'm gonna have to print something out now, because this is this is too much. I'm sorry, we're not really gonna kind of going on with the. Um... Oh Lord, what are these? What? Oh, it's just disgraceful. <clears throat> right, it's just. <laughs> okay, I'll print this one out because it's it's kind of a good representation, eh? Let's get a good representation up. Hold on, hold on, hold your hold your horses. We'll have this. We'll have it. We'll have it for you right in a moment. <sighs> Two sheets of paper. No, thank you. I'll have one. Only one sheet, please. <clears throat> Fine. Good. All right. So that's printing out. Um. Okay. So this like uh, this gnat person came in like waving a body world exhibition thing. Um, to in front of this Chinese bloke, I don't even know if he's Chinese, um, but yeah, she was like waving it at him, going, "These." Um, she was saying that the that the bodies in the Body World exhibition were taken illegally. I don't know if this is true or not. I've never found evidence for it. <laughs> look, look. This is in black and white. Sorry, I don't have color at the moment. But look at that. Do you want that? Put that, tick that box at the end of your life that says, yeah, I'll, I'll be down for that. What position do you want to be in? <laughs> I want to be doing uh, a gymnastics, please. 
there's a brain hanging in the corner there. That's just a brain of someone. Oh, great. Uh, I don't know what that is. What's this? Throat penis. <laughs> what was this thing? <laughs> well, that's why it's been done then, isn't it? So we can look. No, there's this knob at the bottom there. <laughs> oh, dear. Do you want that? When, you, when you're finished? The end of your life? Take the box there. It says, yeah, you can have your knob dangling out. With your brain in your knob. You know? Just have your brain in your knob on display in the Body Wars exhibition. Tick that box. <laughs> Come on, knob. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Knob and balls. There you go. That's what it looks like on the inside. Oh. It's, just, it's just gross. Like, what is wrong with us that we want to go and see that as well? And what is wrong with the person who made it? Anyway, so... So she came in waving this Body Worlds exhibitions like leaflet in front of this Chinese bloke saying that the um, the the Body Worlds corpses were all members of the Falun Gong um, religion that was banned in China because it's subversive apparently and you know the democracy of China thing Democratic Republic I don't even know what it's called. I don't know what the thing. Don't don't. I don't know what I'm talking about with regards to China. I'm just going to try and repeat what she said. So that the body world's bodies were all like from Falun Gong practitioners in China who were killed, and their bodies were being used illegally for the body world's exhibition. Now, I think she just made that up, but there might be truth in it. Have a look. Look up. Look it up online. <laughs> I think I tried looking up at it looking it up online and I just I gave up. I was like, what is this? Yeah, so she was a nutter, basically. Um, and I stood in front of the guy then took the flak and sort of calmed her down, I suppose, um, because it was just causing a scene, a massive scene that was annoying for everyone. So I calmed her down oh, using my special fire horse powers. <laughs> yeah, so I could... I guess I could say that we were friends, Nat and I. I kind of fancied her, even though her face like looked like a sleeping dragon. <laughs> yeah, basically. And she was always like chewing her food. And she was ridiculously, um, oh, what do you call it? Bossy and control freak. And everything had to be completely clean. And you couldn't, oh, what was it? She just had rules on everyone's behaviour. Like, everyone else's behaviour was controlled by her, basically, in her own mind. So, um, yeah, she was a difficult person. And then me and Anthony um, were, like, developed into quite good friends. Um, and we <laughs> made this thing called Hate Water because it was to kind of, like, annoy her because she was, like... She was totally against everything in the world apart from Falun Gong and veganism, basically. So everything else was wrong and bad and immoral and, and you know, uh, dangerous. Um, so we made this thing called Hate Water, which was just basically a normal bottle of water. And we just put the label Hate Water on it. <laughs> um, just, you know, because she was all about peace and love and we just wanted to kind of bring it back down to earth a little bit. Peace on Earth and Falun Gong and vegetarian and veganism and like chewing your food 32 times. Which was actually really oppressive. She was a really oppressive person. Um, so we made the hate water and it may or may not have freaked her out a bit. I don't know. We also made a penta pentagram. The the thing with the five, the like five, five pointed star thing. <laughs> Yeah, the pentagram. We made a pentagram in a circle on the floor out of um, petals of, like, flowers, obviously. But flower petals, right? And we made this pentagram on the floor. And I think we put the hate water in the middle of it, like, in the middle. and Or sprinkled it around and stuff. Um, just to wind her up. Because <laughs> she thought that everything was from the devil anyway. So, you know, we just... That was fun. In the staff room. You see, the staff had like these little, um, this like one room 
which was kind of it's just a room a computer and a table and some chairs so it wasn't much of a staff room but it was their little staff room area yeah um and i don't know how exactly but i think it's because i've been there for so long i'd been in that hostel for like ages and ages and ages i just used to hang out in the staff room bit with all the like staff members um i only got kicked out of there like once or twice um by like a higher level manager of some kind who said what are you doing in here get out but most of the time i was just hanging around in there yeah because i was friendly with the staff and they were cool with it so that was fun so we made a little pentagram on the floor to freak out nap and i never actually heard i don't think she did get freaked out by it but it was the point it was like you know the message the intention that counted so yeah we did that that was good <laughs> oh yeah and that was the time i think it was that same night actually that i had a spliff or well, part of a spliff anyway um i can't remember where i got it from actually one of the other blokes there's a guy called robert um <laughs> he was a cool guy uh he was a harry krishna Oh, there's so many cool people to talk about in this place. He was a Harry Krishna and he he was just like, so he'd come from sleeping in the park. All right, let me tell what I know of him. So he'd come from the Harry Krishna temple, right? He was still wearing the white, oh man, the white robe thing with the beads and that. And he had these little glasses that made him look like, I don't know, something out of Back to the Future. Those like dweeby small flame black black frame glasses but there's just something about the way he wore them that just made i don't know it's just a little weird and uh the first time i <clears throat> met him he was in his like white harry krishna uh robe thing with white trousers and um he said hey i see you i think i was checking out a girl i must have been checking out a girl like when he clocked me and he's like, ah, I see ya. Yeah, I see ya. Uh huh. Mm hmm. I see ya. And there was something about the way that he spoke. It's like, it was weird. It was though he knew how I was feeling. So he would resonate from a place where he knew how I was feeling. And that was probably the first time that I'd had that. So it's like he, he was operating from a deeper place. I understand that now. Because I, I know that I relate in that way to people um, often nowadays. <clears throat> so, yeah, he's he, he's like, he was, <laughs> he was a fucking nutter. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, so he'd come from the Hare Krishna temple. Then he'd been sleeping in the park, Central Park, as I was saying about hobos last time, that people liked to kind of sleep in the park. <laughs> oh, with these things. I just sometimes just like to have my arms poking out but it's not working oh now it's stuck yeah so he was sleeping in the park and then he comes to sleep in the hostel right and i don't, I don't think he really had enough money to do it i don't know what he was doing for money and where he's got his money from um but he ended up sleeping on the roof of the hostel which was not allowed of course and then so he got kicked out <laughs> Oh, man. And um, Anthony said that this Robert guy, Harry Krishna Robert guy, right? Anthony said that he didn't like him because he just had this sort of strange look of a murderer about him. I was like, no, man, you got him all wrong. He's cool. He's he's down. You know, maybe he'd maybe he'd reached like this kind of surrendered state of mind where he would murder your ego. But I don't. He was a harmless person. He was a he was a he was a fox in the night though that he would just slip away. And he would kind of just show up and then disappear and then show up again randomly somewhere else. <laughs> it was just like this sort of, uh, yeah, he was strange. I don't, I didn't find him creepy. I found him quite relatable, um, and quite open and, and honest and stuff. Um, I liked the guy, but he just kept disappearing all the time. He was just like there one minute and then he'd gone. Uh, but he get him like told me some cool stuff, uh, about how like modern society our entertainment culture is built to distract us mainly from the pain of life and from the pain of hard work and from the fact that we're our minds are oppressed and our minds aren't our own so that made sense like how the radio is constantly on in um 
in places and there's background noise always going on and <clears throat> the culture that we are in in terms of pop music and films is all there as a distraction to take us away from how we are actually feeling right now and what we actually are doing right now and it's like there's always something else to distract us from where we are and who we are and what we're doing um yeah that was an interesting thing that he said and i thought you know that does make some kind of sense how our minds are being kept occupied by these entertainment things now he made a more of a conspiracy theory about it like it was being done that way on purpose to keep us in that um state the sort of sleep state by uh like a kind of bigger force some i know maybe he mentioned illuminati or something but personally i don't believe it is being controlled necessarily by a higher group or anything like that i just think that that's how it has evolved how our entertainment culture has evolved because we naturally are not wanting to face ourselves at this point in time we're naturally wanting to escape our feelings and our pains and our strifes and our struggles and that so we have this whole industry um that is there to distract us i don't think it's being imposed upon us i feel like it's just we we are continuously choosing to keep that there um yeah so i didn't subscribe to the whole kind of it's a conspiracy that is being done to us on purpose by something that we can't control i'm like well you can just turn it off you know <clears throat> So he was, but he was an interesting person. Then we had Tattoo Girl. She was cute, man. She was really sexy. She had loads of tattoos all over her. She's from Miami. And she liked me. I think she fancied me, but I don't know what I was doing with regard to women at that time. Um, I don't know what I was doing. Like, I didn't have any mojo, basically. I didn't have no mojo. I had a, a little brief sexual interlude with this gay guy who was there which we didn't really do much i think we just kind of cuddled and maybe like played with each other's willies a bit but uh yeah that didn't go anywhere i didn't want it to go anywhere he wanted it to go somewhere i didn't want it to go anywhere um yeah and i didn't really think i don't like men i don't really enjoy men um you know it's just whatever but he was pretty upset that it didn't go anywhere um he was kind of mad at me and he wouldn't talk to me he wouldn't even be friendly with me like just because he did he was like pissed that i led him on and that he wanted more so we couldn't be friends because he wanted more so i was like oh, well it doesn't mean why do you have to be a jerk like why can't you just be um an open-hearted, open-minded person who can still tolerate the existence of another person just because they don't want to have sex with you. Like, douchebag. Get over yourself. Mm. So that was that person. <laughs> And then there was Kwaku, Mr. Kwaku, uh, English guy. Yeah, I think, he, yeah, he was English. English black dude, probably around the same age as me, maybe a little bit older, but he was a rampant stallion. He was shagging all over the place. And he was a worker there. Um, he'd just come in after I'd already got there. And he started working there. And... Uh, and then he just started like shagging his way through various of the hostel visitors. So there's just one particular one who was the girl from Sweden, I think it was, with red curly hair. Can't remember her name. But Kwaku was like, yeah, I'm totally going to get on that. Yeah, Ross, why you, sh you should be getting some action, man. And I was like, look, I don't, I don't even know what, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> don't know what I'm doing here, man. Like, I don't know. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> Let alone who I'm, whether I'm going to shag anyone or not. You know, like I, I don't know why I'm here, dude. You know, I'm just kind of being in the moment, just kind of 
flowing with the thing. You know, I'm not trying to achieve anything here. He was like, no, oh, man. Yeah, come on. You should go and get like get, get some pussy, man. And I was like, oh, I just, I don't know what I'm doing, man. I don't know why I'm here. Anyway, and then there's this Scottish guy as well. He was pretty cool. He wasn't there for long enough. He was a cool guy. Um, little, short little guy. Looks a bit like a mole. You know, sort of like beady eyes, long snout, <laughs> whiskers, <laughs> short hair, as all moles have. <laughs> and uh, he reminds me of a friend who I have at the moment. But um, so, so he kind of came back in a different form. But this original guy, uh, I think his name was Kieran. Let's call him Kieran. So Kieran was a Scottish guy. And he found me. Uh, he found me fascinating. He even said that I. Fi- I'm just trying to do my Scottish accent now. I find uh, people like you fascinating. I'm like, what do you mean people like me? And he's like, well, you know, you're eccentric. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> so <laughs> that was a pretty good Scottish accent, to be fair. Yeah. Um. So he he was cool. He was a cool guy. Like we hang around and went and visited some places and stuff. Oh, uh, what did we go to? Oh man, I can't remember. We were waiting in the queue. I remember one thing. I don't know if he was there on that occasion, but we were waiting in the queue for something. And um, I he asked me, right, if I was going to start, uh, I wanted to learn drums. I was just thinking, of, you know, like, when I get back home, you know, playing, playing some drums. What? How should I start? He says, that's really good. I'm pleased with that. I don't know if you're pleased with it, but I'm pleased with it. Yeah. So he wanted to learn drums, and he asked me, so how, how am I going to start? What should I do? And um, <laughs> I went... And <laughs> I just went silent for like a minute or two. <laughs> but it was productive silence. I was thinking, I was like, uh, concocting like a kind of a, a decent answer in my head. And uh, <laughs> he, I'm sure he didn't know what the hell was going on. Because <laughs> he's asked me this question and I've just gone completely silent. <laughs> and he's just sat there like looking around like. Uh. <laughs> and then I kind of finished processing all my different information in my head. And I just started speaking. I was like, right, well, what you want to do? is you should probably just start like tapping on things to begin with. And then like um, whenever you find yourself, um, I don't know, waiting for the ATM to work, you should just like start doing some rhythms and start playing. Just start patting on your hands. Like first do a bit uh, with your right hand, just solely on your right and then a bit on your left and just pat left, right, left, right. And I just gave him this kind of whole answer about what you should do and how you should get into the drumming vibe. And then I... uh, told him to get some sticks and to get a little practice pad and probably to get some kind of like DVD thing or whatever. Uh, Yeah. So I gave him this really good answer about what you should do to start drums. (laughs) Right. But I didn't know off the top of my head. So I guess I had to kind of calculate it all and figure it all out and give a good answer. And then I said to him, Oh, what did I say? I said to him, um, like, (laughs) What did you think had happened when I just went silent? He's, he said something like, oh, oh, he said a really good witty thing, which was something along the lines of, oh, I just thought you're doing your normal thing. <laughs> I thought you would just be an eccentric again or something like that. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. So that was good. I like that. I remember that moment. Ah, these moments. There's so many good moments. Okay. Um, and then and then uh, then I was hanging out with this guy Joey. I think Joey and um, Kieran. We both went. We all went out to Chinatown. This might be the same day as the drumming thing. I'm not sure. But we all went out to Chinatown, right? Because Joey wanted to show us these. Um, little dumplings, this kind of Chinese dumpling things, right? That he's like, yeah, these things are the best. Uh, he was American though, so he's like, yeah, these things are the best. <laughs> um, and I was like, what is a dumpling? I don't even know what is it. What is a dumpling? I don't think I'd had dumplings. So they weren't the same small little ones. They were these sort of big puffy things. Um, and he was trying to get us to this particular place that did these really good ones, yeah? And... Um, 
and I was into my whole kind of spirituality presence thing, you know, and how if you become present in what you're doing, it makes what you do more effective. Um, and the the lady who was like wrapping up people's meals, like um, I don't know Chinese meals, whatever it was, wrapping them up like right. So I was observing her and just watching how she's doing. It's like she knew it really 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 good like she was just doing it kind of like so smoothly and then put that down and then she just do the next one and then she like put it down and wrap it up and just like put it down like that and it's just really smooth slick well rehearsed practice movement and it was so effective and so neat that she was doing it and then she just put it down and i said to joe i was like look that woman i don't think i said it in a stupid voice actually i said look that woman, she's like a fish. <laughs> Look how she wraps. It's like a fish. <laughs> Look how she wraps the food. Look, it's like a fish. And Joey's like, yeah, yeah, it's like a fish. <laughs> but I was trying to point out, like, look how smooth and quick, like a fish smoothly you know washing through the water like a fish isn't it <laughs> and then like jerry's like yeah uh -huh. like a fish <laughs> oh man you had to be there so that is um nearly the end of this particular one. Oh, and i'm saying i'm gonna try and like bring these videos to an end I am. I am going to try and bring them to an end. But we've obviously got more to talk about. Um, because the end point of these videos, right, there's a certain point that I need to get to, which is um, <clears throat> coming off of medication, probably, is where I need to get to with this series um, to feel like I'm satisfied. Uh, because then that, that's, that sort of brings us up to present date in a way. Because that was in 2013 when I finally got off medication. And it was at that point that all the things that I do now came into full force. For example, my YouTube channel, my artwork, my music took on a different journey. Um, my writing started that as a practice hardcore. So yeah, so that sort of is a real cut off point when i came off medication my life suddenly started to change big time and my the way i lived my life started to change so we've got to kind of get to there and that involves me going through five years of depression before that and then uh, 72 days which is like two and a half months in the psych ward itself then there was a period of time before the psych ward where i was living at home and th there was also like a period of a month sorry working back from the medication five years of suicide then we have not suicide suicide or depression right then we had the psych ward itself then we had a period of a month i'm going backwards in time we had a period of a month before the second psych ward where i was out in the wilderness living in a friend's attic loft conversion <laughs> it wasn't like a little rat it was a loft conversion right i didn't suddenly transmorph transmorphigate into a rat and start living in someone's attic it was similar to that though i lived in an attic in a loft conversion of a friend's house for a month because i had escaped from the first hospital <laughs> evaded the police yeah and got into hiding to work out work off my sectioning okay and before that particular sectioning i was just living at home and causing my parents an utter nightmare and then before that i was in america so we're still in the America portion. So we've got to kind of come back from America. I've got to cause my parents a hell of a lot of grief by being over-Americanized and being weird and hiding things around the house and being up at odd hours because my time shifting was time shifted and, you know, annoying them, basically. And uh, then I have to be sectioned. And I have to go into Wexham Park Hospital for like six days. Apparently it was six days. I felt like it was longer. I felt like it was 10 days. But according to my dad, it was only six days. And yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then 
I have to leave there, I have to come back home, go up to my room and make a phone call to my friend and say, dude, I've got to go. I jumped out the window, ran off down the road and my parents didn't see me for like a month. It was wicked for me. They hated it. But this is the story from my perspective. If you want to hear their story, ask them. All right, but this is my story. Uh, yeah, so I went into the wilderness for a month. Then I came back because they had my passport. Long story. Right, my parents had my passport. Long story, as I say. Tried to get my passport off them. They wouldn't get the passport, give me the passport. So I went upstairs and started banging on the drum kit. How do you play the drums? Uh, slapped my dad a few times because he was being a dick and wouldn't give me the passport and was lying to me. Uh, mum calls the police. I got sectioned again. Oh, and in between all of this madness, at some point I lived in a different house for a while um, under my own steam and then spent a couple of days living in Stansted Airport. Yeah. And then lived on the streets of London for a couple of days as well. Nearly got raped. Uh... Lots of stuff to talk about. My neck hurts. Okay, so, yeah. What a fucking story. So we've got to get all the way through all that properly in a bit of detail. And then I think probably the suicidal bit, the depression start part, is just going to be the easiest because it was just the most repetitive and boringest part where it was just basically I felt like shit every day while I did normal things, like had a job and had a band, played gigs and did rehearsals and taught guitar. Um, yeah. So that started to level out a bit by that point, but I still felt like utter shit for that whole time. So that's a little bit of an overview of what we've got coming up. <coughs> We're still in America. This is some good shit. But I want to work towards an ending. Okay, we are working towards an ending. There is an ending to this story. And there is an ending to my channel. Because I don't want to be doing this forever. It's annoying overall. I need to stop. I need to have it as... Something I did for a while. I need to just say, oh yeah, check out my YouTube channel. I've got a load of videos on it there. Um, but I'm not doing anything at the moment on it because I wanted to break for like two years. Two years. 